first time, the first car to bear the name of Chrysler. It would not have been difficult for an engineer at that time to set down his major objectives. They were greater safety, economy and dependability, better appearance, riding comfort, and ease of handling, and more room. Engineers well knew what you, the motorist, wanted, and they had their work cut out for them. It was their job to find out how improvements could be made and still keep down the initial cost of the car. That was the beginning of a new world in motoring. The great resources of science were put to work for the benefit of the average man. Now the fruits of research were made available to everybody, for no longer was a fine automobile just a rich man's hobby. Here science was, and is, applied to practical things. And by instrumentation, goes far beyond ordinary perceptions, beyond the range of human sight and hearing, of touch and taste and smell, all for the benefit of the ultimate consumer, for you and me. The engineers know their objectives. Their problems, thousands of them, are to devise ways to attain those objectives, to find an answer to that ever persisting question, how can we build better? Here from one organization are gathered a great body of engineers. Here in the laboratory devoted to ferrous metals, there is constant research to learn more about and thus improve the basic ingredients, which will later form bodies, frames, engine blocks, axles, and shafts for your cars and trucks. Each section is allotted to the study of one of the basic elements of steel, such as carbon, manganese, or molybdenum, so the engineers can discover for your ultimate benefit just what each will do under different circumstances. Nowadays, metallurgical research is expanded by the use of the spectroscope, which can detect in an alloy the presence of any metallic element by photographing its lines in a spectrum. Essential to the quality of certain alloys are exactly the right amounts of such elements as zinc, tin, copper, or lead. Today, no metal can keep a secret from these engineers, for they can detect in the organic structure a bit of foreign matter so small that it's the equivalent of finding the traditional needle in the haystack. Discovering the needle in 12 and a half tons of hay would be picking out one ten millionth of the stack. Still another delicate instrument, the densitometer, measures the quantity of each element present in any alloy. Laying bare the mysteries of metals gives you a better automobile, and here by the use of polarized light, the engineer sees just how a particular part behaves in action. They literally look into a model of it and observe just what happens when a load is applied. Thus they can determine where useless metal can be eliminated from different parts of your car or where a part should be strengthened for longer life. Here again the camera sees what escapes the human eye. Types of metal treatment are recorded in this X-ray diffraction four-place camera which photographs atomic changes in the metal undergone in the process of heat treating or working and reveals to the engineer important facts about the internal structure of the metal so it will be exactly fitted for the job it has to do for you. To obtain still another scientifically accurate check on carburation as well as on the cooling system and car performance in general, the engineers built this full-sized wind tunnel. The propeller can make a 90 mile an hour wind which simulates car movement on the road. A large dynamometer creates any needed load at the rear wheels. Thus, by instrumentation, they erect the equivalent of a mountain here in the laboratory and then study ways to make the engine operate more smoothly and economically. In this field, the engineers have made such extraordinary progress that a separate building houses their spectacular experiments looking toward greater smoothness and longer life. Few people know about the achievements in powder metallurgy, and yet its products such as these are to be found in every one of our cars and trucks, as well as in scores of other machines such as airplanes, railroad locomotives and coaches, refrigerators, vacuum cleaners, clocks, elevators, in fact, practically wherever mechanical parts need lubrication. In this new branch of metallurgy, Virgin metals such as copper and tin are finely powdered. Then they are mixed together in proper proportion and made into forms under great pressure. 
Next, the shapes are baked to form a sort of hard metal sponge, which is then filled with oil. The result is this astonishing development, the oilite bearing. In appearance, it looks much like any ordinary bronze bearing. But as a matter of fact, because of its spongy texture, it is more than one-third oil by weight, although still of tremendous strength. If pressure is applied to oilite, tiny drops of oil come to the surface. In other words, here is a bearing that oils itself. Oilite bearings are so strong that loads equal to 20 tons per square inch can be maintained. As for long life, oilite bearings on test have run for 1,300 million revolutions without appreciable wear of the shaft or the bearing. On more than 20 separate parts in our cars and trucks, these marvelous bearings oil themselves for smoothness and long life. Impartial observers representing a great engineering magazine have voted our steel body the safest in the automotive industry. Comfort must be combined with this safety, and so vibrations are viewed on the oscilloscope and then various types of insulating materials are applied to take them out. Outstanding, too, has been research in rubber, resulting in many compounds that have been put to wide use throughout our cars and trucks. For example, the bonding of rubber to metal contributed to the practical development of floating power engine mountings, patented by the corporation. The principle of floating power is as simple as its appearance was sensational. The engine is floated in rubber with one mounting placed high in front and the other low in the rear. Thus, by allowing the engine to oscillate about its own axis, the natural vibrations are absorbed and are smothered in soft cushions of rubber so they do not reach the body. Since 1931, the public has bought more than five and a half million cars and trucks provided with matchless floating power. Another productive field is that of plastics, which are now used for steering wheels, instrument panel parts, and electrical insulation. One day, these wizards of the laboratory may present us with a new material for bodies with the strength of steel, but also translucent or even transparent. Fantastic? Well, so was the automobile itself just a few short years ago. And every new device, every engineering development means more work for a vast army of men and women. Take shock absorbers as an example. Since they became standard equipment, more than three and a half million additional man days of labor are required each year on this item alone. Thus, as cars are improved by engineering, more jobs are created, payrolls are increased, and more car owners reap the benefit of a high degree of safety increased comfort and greater economy. It would be a lot easier to build cars if we didn't have so much weather in this country. Within our boundaries, the temperature ranges up and down as much as 150 degrees. So your cars will be efficient no matter what the climate. Our engineers study their behavior in tropical weather with a the thermometer way above 100 degrees and also in sub-zero cold. In this room are studied the effects of low temperatures on all phases of performance, lubricants, starting, carburation, and brake action. Right now, let's see. It's a mere 10 degrees below zero. If the engineers really wanted cold, they can send the mercury down to 60 below here in the super cold cabinet. And to find out what will happen to metal parts and to lacquer finishes in salt air, the engineers expose them to salt spray. And if defects appear, they are corrected. Up here on the sixth floor, there's great secrecy, for the models are jealously guarded from prying eyes, so when the time comes for announcing the new cars, the public, year after year, will thrill to their fresh lines. These men specialize in luxury. From their drawing boards come handsome interiors, as inviting as a fine piece of furniture. Steering wheels that make your fingers itch to grasp them. Instrument panels that are marvels of balance and visibility. Hardware that sparkles like the masterpiece of a jeweler. These artists are looking into the future, forecasting startling things to come. At first glance, it seems these men deal principally in mad whimsies. 
but behind every design, no matter how bizarre it appears, must be sound knowledge of engineering and production practice. Beauty, yes, but with it must be combined utility. Sometimes the artist's conception is realized in a full-size clay model. At other times, only the front end is built up by these deaf sculptors. Or a miniature model is built out of wood. Over the framework is placed a coating of clay that is worked into an exact model of the designer's sketch. Always the engineers insist that not only must it look good, but also it must work. So they say, ah oh yes, it's a striking design, but what about visibility? A pair of lights corresponding to the driver's eyes shine on the chart and show at once if there is a safe view of the road. The model must also be approved by the experts on aerodynamics, a science within itself. They work with another wind tunnel, but this one is in miniature. Suspended in the mouth of the tunnel, the model may be placed in any position. Air currents are created by a propeller and are so controlled that the engineer can turn on a gentle breeze or a hundred mile an hour hurricane. The readings on the indicators show the resistance to the wind set up by the model and permit the engineers to decide scientifically whether it is soundly designed. Always hungry for facts, the engineers delight in punishing their handiwork, for by tests such as these, they can design and engineer better automobiles. No matter how handsome a car interior may be, unless the seat cushion stands up under 1,100 bouncings an hour, it is rejected. Fabrics must pass severe trials for twisting and pulling. They must not wear through in the rubbing test. They must not fade when exposed to blistering sunshine. A car door is slammed 780 times an hour by this clever device that concentrates years of normal usage into a day. So the engineers build and then tear down that they may build better. Every test, every operation, every research project is directed to giving the owner more trouble-free performance and more transportation miles for his automobile dollar. All this is done at our expense to save you expense, to ensure happy and carefree operation of every product of the corporation. At last we come to a complete self-contained automobile, but we meet it at an unfortunate hour, for it is being strapped and chained to what engineers call the Belgian Rolls. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Oscar. It is his unhappy lot to be forever bounced about while on his lap he holds instruments that record the vibrations of the body. A switch is thrown. Away she goes. No car on a cobbled road in Flanders ever took the beating to which this automobile is subjected. The wheels rest on drums with cleats placed so the car is racked unmercifully. Furthermore, the speed increases from five to 25 miles an hour and then goes back to five. And yet notice that although the wheels are pounded furiously, so efficient are the springs and shock absorbers that the body rides on an even keel. In this and other tests we have seen, the engineers pre-prove the car in the laboratory by instrumentation, but they don't stop there. Long before they are made available to the public, the cars are double-checked on the road. The engineers send them out over the country so they may observe their behavior under the actual road and climate conditions that the owners will encounter from coast to coast. On the solid foundations of the past, our engineers are building for the future. Here in this country of unhampered initiative, of free enterprise, of that indomitable will to achieve that we all proudly acclaim as part of the American tradition. On every highway the country over, we see visible, tangible proof of the years of progress made by our engineers, the fruits of their labors, such outstanding motor car achievements as four-wheel hydraulic brakes, steel bodies, high compression engines, floating power, modern styling, Amola steel, super finish, and now that marvelous new development, fluid drive. All these constitute a never-ending parade of brilliant accomplishment contributing to your safety and happiness.
bear both factual evidence and added assurance that you get the good things first from Chrysler Corporation. <laughs>